to Idaho and we're going to live in a trailer. Remember my reaction? I was like, Ooh. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully by now you have noticed that we have actually changed the name of our video podcast channel from GSL Uncut to New World Old Soul. Hopefully you guys like that name as much as we do. We are very happy and excited about it. Before jumping into this episode of the podcast, I actually have a quick favor to ask of all of you out there. In diving into our channel analytics, Melissa and I are noticing that approximately only 40% of you who view this channel on a regular basis are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you are so inclined to help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below and also turning on the notification bell, we would greatly appreciate it. What that does for us is it allows for us to reach out to and hopefully book very high quality guests for all of you out there to take in and enjoy. Uh, you'd be doing us a tremendous, tremendous favor. And in return, what we can promise to you is that we will absolutely continue to scale things up and do our absolute best to provide you guys with the best show that we are capable of producing ourselves. We do all of this, she and I here in-house on our property. So with all that being said, I want to thank you once again for being here and hope that you enjoy this uh, very interesting conversation that Melissa and I had with my dad. Enjoy. Hi, dad. Hi, son. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Is this, is this weird? <laughs> eh, it's a little weird. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. Sorry we dragged you out here. It's fine. It's a little outside my normal comfort zone, but it's fine. What has become your normal comfort zone now that you're retired? Um, you know, it's different. I'm so used to, you know, I'm so used to having hours filled, lots of hours filled. Yeah. Lots of hours filled, especially the last... 10 years lots of ours filled. melissa's looking at me because she wants to make a joke for our, our viewing audience what's the joke no it's fine the moment's already passed she, she was gonna crack a joke because it always comes to such a shock to people that you are my father given the way it is that you look versus how oh. it is that i look yeah i'm just i'm just saying what everyone's thinking because <laughs> when when jeremy and i went on our first date to the movie with the free movie tickets everyone's heard the story right um for some reason, you insisted I get out of the car and come up and meet you. Yeah. <laughs> and you remember I, that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he forgot the ticket. So we, he was like, we have to swing by my house. And he's like, wait in the car. <laughs> like, he didn't want me to go in. I was like, okay. And then he comes back out and he's like, you have to go in. I was like, what? And he's like, my dad says you have to go in. <laughs> yeah. It's not a, I mean, I, I didn't look at it like it was a big deal. It was just yeah. like, oh, hi. That's it. So I go in and I'm walking up the stairs and that mean cat that... Um, Meredith has Truman, Truman batted me on, on the, the head, head. Yeah. and then I was like oh my gosh his cat hates me he's gonna take it as a sign he, he hated everybody though I didn't know that yeah and then I went up there and then I was like oh Jeremy's adopted like so seriously yeah I because I met you and Meredith because I'm not brown yeah I expected <laughs> you to be Hispanic no <laughs> no and if you looked at Meredith you'd be like that's definitely right. not related yeah but he never said that oh this is my stepmom and my dad like nothing so i thought i was going up to meet his parents and it's like this blonde woman and you and me right and, and i was me. like oh yeah. he, like they adopted him from mexico yeah, or did. something yeah but it turned out he wasn't even mexican so i no. was all confused no because he got i i told people at work i said if you look at my kid up here yeah. everybody thinks he's mexican and yeah they look at the name on his uniform and it's the same thing they're like yeah oh you're you're mexican or whatever central yeah, central american Spanish name. Hispanic, yeah. yeah yeah no no yeah. no it was very shocking so, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't get any of that from me as you can tell <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny i was just like i thought and then i thought for a long time that he was for sure adopted and then I, it no. was like a couple of dates before he told me like, oh, no, that's my dad. Yeah. No. It's, it's, <laughs> you could take the DNA test if you want. <laughs> yeah. No, we got the results. Yeah. It's like Maury Povich all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out you are the, the You father. are the father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No, it's all good. So anyway, we were talking about uh, you are now retired after a long career in law enforcement. How has that been treating you? How has that uh, adjustment been for you? Um, The first, I'd say like the first maybe six months. Because I... I officially was gone in August, but then I had my knee procedure. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of laid up for about a month. So by then it was September. It was starting to get, um, not cold, but it was starting to get the fall. But then I wasn't officially gone till November 1st. And that winter hit, that first winter hit, and it was pretty tough. Because like all of a sudden I'm like, I got a lot of free time on my hands. <laughs> I mean, I was I was getting up and, you know, 
in the beginning, I was like, I'm get up and I'm going to go ride my bike and work out. And, yeah. But then as winter got on and it got drearier and drearier, I swear, you're not outdoors. Right. You know. Yeah. You're not outdoors. And it just was like, I got a lot of free time on my hands. So then I started doing like home projects, small stuff that I could do. But it was an adjustment. It was definitely adjustment. Because I, I was used to that. Like I said, you know, I was used to that 50, 60 hours a week. Yeah. That for, nonstop. For a long time. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, I don't have to, I don't have to get up at 4.30. Mm-hmm. And get ready. Get my coffee. Put on my uniform and I'm out the door. Is it, is it difficult ever having all that free time? Because I know for me, I, I mean, we we were in the same career field. When I left, I, at the time when I was still when I was still doing it, I dreamt about what it would be like to be quote unquote retire, retired. And granted, we've been very busy here, but I find that at times I'm like, I w- I was incorrect back when I was still working. To where I was like, you know, oh, I don't need any hobbies or like I'm just gonna relax and do whatever I want. And now. When I do, I do have down days. I almost feel guilty about it. Like I, I grapple with it and I struggle. Like, no, I feel uneasy. Like I should be doing something. So my experience was, like I said, winter made it hard because all of a sudden there was no like outdoors. That made yeah. it really hard. Um, and my experience was I, I felt like, man, I'm 60 years old. And I only have, not to be morbid, but I only have X <laughs> amount of years left to yeah. you know physically to like do stuff yeah so i found in my brain i was like i need to make like every day like i should be doing something so i get i kind of get what you're saying like yeah i kind of wasted yesterday i didn't do anything but then there's nice days where it's where it's like man i i just chilled mm-hmm. i didn't meredith would be like what'd you do today and i'm like i don't know watch like four gut felds and had lunch <laughs> and then like tooled around on the internet and yeah and there's nothing wrong with that right there's certain days that are like man it was pretty nice to do that yeah i just think my down days like i tell her sometimes sometimes i'm i'm genuinely bored yes and it I, it it's it's a very stark contrast from when i was still working i'm like oh i would love to be bored all day every day right. and that's definitely hasn't been the case like i need something to do I right. need hobbies. I need to stay busy. I need to keep my mind occupied. Me too. Yeah. I, I can't like, I know people are like, oh, just enjoy like quiet time. And it's like, no, I would be the, a terrible person to just meditate. I I, yeah. I, that, I don't have that in me. And mm-hmm. I, even my neighbor, the neighbors are like, man, you're always like doing stuff. We see you like outside and you're washing the cars. You're doing stuff. I'm like, I can't just sit around. I just, not in my nature, especially coming from 50, 60 hours a week. Long I mean, I remember working like literally right before I retired, I'm 15, 20 hour days. I mean, it got old. Yeah, I was concerned about you. Oh, it was draining. It was, um, yeah, I mean, right? I, I would tell you all the time, I'm like, my dad's working too much, like yeah. way too much. I was just trying to power out because I knew I was going to retire. I was going to be one more year. I told you yeah. I was going to work one more year because I wanted to get high five at that rank. Yeah. Because that's our retirement system. So mm-hmm. the high five, but then... With all the changes that happened <laughs> after George Floyd and all that, yeah. I was like, I mean, and Meredith said the same thing. Like, man, you're you're burning yourself out. And mm-hmm. when the when the when the climate came and the anti cop climate hit, and as you know, mm-hmm. everything changed. And I was like, I don't want to go to prison for doing my job. Yep, that was my main concern. So, did you become a, a police officer for the same reason as Jeremy? Just like kind of obligation to uh that's a a hard thing like so well because jeremy kind of he always said i'm never going to be a cop because i see like what my dad goes through and then sure enough we're having a baby and he's like i gotta go be a cop (laughs) so is that how you fell into it too just Um, obligation to take care of your son i was 13 when he became a girl yeah i know but that's still pretty young yeah so i had done uh if you want to call it a first career i had done a first career for a private company in Honolulu as like, first I started working in their warehouse when he was like a newborn. Um, and I worked my way <laughs> up to everything. All right. That's okay. You all right. I don't like you choking today. It's the whiskey. <laughs> She's not drinking. Whiskey. Um, so I started working my way up and then I was in sales and I didn't like it, but again, I'm the breadwinner. I got a young family at home and in Hawaii, it's not inexpensive to live. Uh, And then his mom and I got divorced and I still did it, right? Mm -hmm. Still did sales. And then life went on and that company, half the company moved to ironically Washington state. (laughs) And then I was, I went to work for the 
the the half of the company that stayed, but it was not run well. It was just run miserably. So I did that for a few years, but I knew like I need there's going to be a point where I'm going to have to do something else. And it wasn't it wasn't a bad thing. It was just like the it is what it is, and I'm you know I have to go do something that has benefits and can support me and him at the time. And I don't know if you remember this. We we're in Aina Haina, and then it was like we we're watching the news or whatever. And I don't even know if you were there. And then HPD came on with this. We're, on the news? Yeah, well, that was commercial, oh, like okay. a commercial. Like we're gonna, we're hiring and we're, we need officers. And on a lark, I looked at Selena and went, I should go apply for that. Mm-hmm. Just on a lark. I wasn't kind of, I was kind of serious, but not really. I was like, yeah, that's good. Because my brother was a firefighter, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, I should go apply for that. And the next thing I know, I'm like testing mm-hmm. with like 6,000 at the time. This was 94. <sighs> Four, I'm testing with like 6,000 people. And then I, I get a letter from them like, congratulations, you're like number 47 or whatever on the list. And I was like, holy crap. And then, then I get another letter like, we want to get, you know, you got all your psych and all that stuff that I had to go through. And then the next thing I know, I'm in the academy. Hmm. Wondering how you got there. Wondering, kind, of, <laughs> kind of wondering like, wow, man, I don't even know. And then they, in the first day of the academy, they closed the doors in the in our room for our class. And they're like, okay, we've heard all the stories about, I want to make a difference. And I want to save the world. It's, it, they don't want to hear that. It's, it's like the what you see in a job interview. Why are you here? I want to make a difference. I love my community. They're like, why are you really here? And they went down every <laughs> single person. And when they got to me, I was like, I don't really even know. And I told the story, like, it's it's kind of just a lark. I'm just kind of here. And the next thing I know I'm here and I needed a good job and this has job and um, this has benefits and I got a young kid at home and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, okay, cool. Thanks for your honesty. And then next person, nobody was shocked. Nobody was like nothing. It was just like, okay. And there I was. I have a similar story. That's weird. I didn't realize that was your response. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't remember if you were there when I was like, I should, I, I should apply for. I don't that. remember there, but I do remember that time period, and I remember everything being so foreign, and just the idea of you getting into law enforcement just seemed so bizarre at the time because yeah. it's you know that wasn't a part oh, of our lives. Even and, my mom, my mom and dad, my mom was like, I don't, "Oh, you'd be really good." And my dad's like, well, "You know, it's, your grandfather's like, you yeah, know it's, you know, it's kind of dangerous because yeah. he's a World War II vet. It's mm-hmm. kind of dangerous." I'm like, oh, "Oh, yeah, believe me, I." Yeah, it's just it's such a far cry from where we 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 found our save, our, ourselves later in life because you were doing it, I was doing it. It was just it, it's really weird to to think back upon that time, you know, pre law enforcement days. Um, but yeah, I had a very similar academy experience to where yeah, I think it was like the first couple of days they asked us what our reason, our our true reason for yeah. being there uh, was. The real reasons. Yeah, and you know, I explained, hey, I'm I'm 23 years old. I got a child. I got a baby. And I, need, I have a family. I need to take care of. I got a, a mm-hmm. girlfriend at the time that I'm hoping to make my wife. And uh, you know, that became your your motivation and your uh, your your why, your reason for being there. Mm-hmm. And so they, they they pinned that on you. Like remind yourself of that when things get tough right. and when things get dip and hard. I didn't find anything wrong with that. I no, mean, I think, I think that's great. something to like, to like be respected. Like I'm, I'm, I'm here to take care of my family. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a man, you know, not to be old fashioned about it, but that's just how I looked at it. And yeah, you, no. you looked at it the same way. Mm-hmm. And that's how I was raised. Like I said, I, my parents were, you know, World War II generation. That was all like, suck it up mm-hmm. and just do what you got to do. Yeah. You, you know. Same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, think that's carried on in a weird way yeah and i think that's something that was instilled in you and it, yeah. it, you instilled it in me and i try to instill it in our kids too and yeah I, you know stop making excuses stop uh don't don't take the easy way out just because something's difficult you know yeah. see it through and you're gonna down. fail and yeah for sure inevitably that's part of it fail. But, but if but, you don't if you don't fail it and you don't grow and you don't learn yeah. it is what it is yeah persevere yeah 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 don't don't stomp your feet and you know and I there's a few cops that are like that not a lot of them but there's a few cops that are like that yeah I think it's it's human nature it's easy yeah. to to play victim and, yeah. and feel sorry for yourself and wallow yeah. and all that but uh, yeah, yeah. especially in today's day and age which is yeah. unfortunate but yeah yeah okay so uh, something that I think is interesting that so there's a lot of people that are raised by single moms you hear that all the time a lot of guys raised by single moms. I, so you were a single dad and that's Correct. a unique situation you don't hear a lot of single dads that's actually pretty rare. So how do how do you think that affected like your relationship and all of that? Because I find that to be such an interesting dynamic. Like I think of if well, I, I don't think were, it was easy for either of us because there was a lot of crap in the beginning. Um, 
he'll tell you. I'm sure he has. There's a lot of crap. And there's a lot of like bitter, pissed off, angry. And then I started to realize like, no, we're going to, like I said, the same thing. No, we're going to, you went off to his mom. You went off and did what you did. That's on you. I'm going to write it out. And it wasn't easy. I mean, and I wasn't perfect. I never, I, I don't claim to be. Uh, I don't know if I was extra hard on him or I tried to be there. Even when I got promoted, I tried to go to like all his, like all the sporting, sporting uh, band when he was in middle school and you were playing drums. I would, I would try to go all that stuff <laughs> because it's so. like, I, I gotta, that's my, A, I'm only going to get to do it once and then it's gone. So, and I didn't, I, I think because of like, the police job, I didn't make every like soccer game or something yeah, like that. It wasn't but, every time, but you were, I mean, a lot of, if I had, you know, any, uh, family support showing up, it was you. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It was, um, kind of like my, my dad said, it was a tough time. It really molded the way, um, I don't know. It's hard to talk about still. I mean, it's, it's affected me my entire life and it's, it's really shaped and molded the way I do everything. It's the way I view the world, the way we raise our kids, the way I, you know, the spouse that I am. And yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of crappy stuff that happened, but I don't know. I guess I, I, I see the value in it because again, you know, perseverance, I never allowed it to, to become the thing that I pointed to as, as an excuse for any of my, my life shortcomings. And in fact, I'm always made it my goal. I like I told you this before too. It's always served as like my motivation for. Uh, damn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I served as my motivation to try to uh, do better, I guess, for our kids, and and try to be you know the best spouse that I'm capable of being, and and so, and you know, I got a really close cool bond with my dad, and. Uh, Take a breath. <laughs> kind of like I said before, it's, it's, um, he was always the one that was, that was around. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't have anybody else. So, um, always meant a lot to me. And, and, uh, I don't know. There was, there was a lot of good to come from it. I think you were a great role model. Um, you taught me what hard work looked like. And, uh, I was hard on you that sometimes though. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. So, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's not, uh, it's just, like I, think, I said, I wasn't perfect and I was hard on you and yeah, nobody's for, I'm hard on our kids, you know, at times yeah. too. And I think, I think, but there's, it's, it's, it's almost, I view it almost as a requirement in a way, especially when it comes to uh, a man trying to teach his son how to become a man himself. You yeah. know, like I, I can be tough on guy money yeah. and, uh, just the way it is. I think it's, it's part of, uh, the, the natural, uh, flow of things when, yeah. when it comes to trying, trying, trying to raise a, a young man so. and we were we were kind of fortunate like we had like i had my parents that were pretty close and they kind of you know if there was times where something like i couldn't do something whatever he and he was still a little younger they were like oh no we'll we'll do this we'll take care of that and they were retired we'll mm -hmm. we'll come over here we'll, we'll do that and i don't you know i don't know if he if he remembers that but they would show up sometimes to whatever things he had to yeah. do no and, i mean yeah they, it's it's i don't know you're just you're my you were who I looked to for, for support in any way, you right. know, whether it be like, Hey, I needed something. And there were times where, you know, things were lean, you know, we didn't, oh, yeah. we didn't, we didn't have oh, yeah. a lot. And, oh, yeah. uh, but we, but we made do. Yeah. And we I, always, we always made do. I, I tell people that all the time. I said, uh, when I was raising my kid, I said, I didn't have the luxury. I didn't have the kind of money for like, we bought a new truck. Yeah, we, no. we lived in an 850 square foot townhouse, mm -hmm. tiny without one outdoor parking, I drove at the time a 1989 Ford Ranger pickup truck. Remember mm -hmm. the ugly white? Yeah, later white became Ranger. my car. <laughs> yeah, and then later he drove it for, I don't know, like a year or something, maybe a year and a half. Couple like years, that. yeah. Um, we didn't have money to go like, we're going to go to Disneyland. We're going to go. No, we went f camping, remember? Yeah, we went yeah, free recreation. Free, we had camping gear and the permits were free through the, through the state, the state. Or city, I think it was city and county, city and county of Honolulu. So we go and sit in the dark, the night, the four o'clock in the morning, to wait for our permit, and then we go camping. You yeah. bring your friends from like the, like, the neighborhood kids or kids you went to school with on a soccer team, whatever. We bring a couple of them so they could hang out, and then we just did the normal like we're sleeping in tents. Yeah, yeah. It was we're sitting in beach chairs. We're 
It was Rain, good times. Those are great football. times. <laughs> Simpler times. Yeah. You know, simple. Uh, keep yourself occupied. Yep. Your friends. Just the old, the way things used to be back in the day. Those are those are great times. But yeah, and uh, it's a hard. It's why I take like money things so seriously. When people are like, "Oh, you like you know," we've gotten a lot of like, "Oh, you guys have money." And I'm like, "Hold on a second. Anything that it is that we have, we have busted our behinds for." Yep. And you you don't know where it is that I come from. You don't know where Melissa comes from. Yep. Um, the both of us, you know, we we we, we didn't grow up in the lap, lap of luxury by any means. And I'm not trying to, to make it out like to be like we were living on the streets, but uh, you know, at the same time, but. You know, there, yeah. I, we I always remember. had what we needed. And then. Uh, absolutely. You remember going swap meet, shopping for my clothes? Like, hey, you get five pairs yeah, of surf trunks of, or whatever. Of gecko shorts yeah. and you get five t shirts because there's five days in the week. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. And we'd go shop for like, like you know, five for like $20 deals uh -huh. and stuff like that. Or, uh -huh. um, you know, like you were working full time and, and uh, you know, I was a latchkey kid for, for my entire adolescence, essentially, except for the very, very early stages of my childhood and I'd come home and it was like, Hey, get dinner started. Like, here's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking in the house about the cream of mushroom soup and like, <laughs> and, and all that. It's and fast and easy. That's why. Yeah. You know, like corned beef hash dinners and stuff yep. like that. And yeah, was, well, but, but good times. Man. Like, Eggos, Eggo waffles before you went to school. Cause I could just yeah. throw them in the toaster when everything going. And then you started riding your bike. Right. Yeah. When all that happened is right. When you started riding your bike to school. Oh remember? yeah. Like miles. Yeah, Dude, like literally, I was riding to and from school. Like, yeah. this sounds like a really old Can't person. Can't imagine thing, our kids riding miles no, no, on their bike. No, it's so different. No. It was it was nice because it was. Remember, it had that path like the, where yeah. we lived in YPO Gentry. It's on, it's a like a planned community. So there was this path that went up the middle, that all the the, neighbor, the streets kind of dumped into. It's like a walking path or a bike mm -hmm. path. So he could once he crossed the street by our house, then the whole way to school's on that path. And he would go with like some of the neighbor kids were older and like you yeah. guys, you guys be careful, lock your bikes. You know, like yeah. lock your bike up. <laughs> So like, the so 80s like my and 90s. dad, yeah. But he would off he would go, and then I'm like, okay, now I got to go to work, right? Yeah. And then in the afternoons, sometimes, like I said, when I wasn't around, your mom, and dad, and then later on, we had Selena was mm -hmm. around to take to to help. So you had at least had that part of it going on. Yeah. So yeah, it was, but it wasn't easy sometimes. Yeah. No, yeah. it was good times though. I had a good childhood. I don't know. Uh, you know, like all the all the recreational stuff, all the sports. You always had me plugged into sports. I played, yeah. I played soccer. It took me into college. I got a, a, yeah, a, a soccer scholarship. I tried to make it as, for lack of a better term, normal as possible. Yeah, like I even mean, though was, his mom, you know, your mom wasn't around, yeah. I tried to make it as normal as possible. And I, I we still had, I had still had a good relationship with her family, like her parents mm -hmm. and her sister. So there was no like animosity there. It's just. I didn't want it to be a such a friction point. And I tried to like deflate a lot of it. Sometimes I didn't succeed, you know, I didn't succeed at like keeping it peaceful, let's say, keeping it kosher or respectful, but it was a lot to deal with at the time. Yeah. A lot to deal with. Yeah, that would be a lot and a lot of pressure. And I think like, I think with parents, it's so helpful to have that mom and dad dynamic because they are so different. So mm -hmm. the dad comes down, I mean, Jeremy comes down hard on the kids and then I'm always there to choose, mm -hmm. try to be like, okay, but wait, what he's trying to say, Nevea, and what Nevea is trying to say, Jeremy, mm -hmm. like, and without that, I could see how things could be difficult. Escalate. And yeah. escalate without, you know, like your mom was probably the same with you guys growing up. Like, was oh, she yeah. kind of the peacekeeper with yeah. that? Because my mom was stay at home mom, you know, that 1950 got married in 52. So there was just a different dynamic. Yeah. My dad was gone. He worked, worked a lot of hours. And then she was like, pick us up from school, drop us off at school. Yeah. So it was a more leave it to beaver. Yeah. Than what, than what he had. You're right. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, there's challenges in single moms too, because then you just do oftentimes have this softer role, and that's when kids can get out of control. So it's yeah. like, it's either really harsh because you've got dad and no mom to soften it, or the kids aren't getting the discipline that they I told need because I, they only have I told mom. people I didn't have to deal with him a lot as far as like acting out. So that was a blessing. And then he wasn't a girl. Yeah. That was another blessing that would have been because it'd be like, oh my God, this yeah. is like, especially <laughs> like you're 13, 14, 15. Like, yeah, that's mm, problem. Uh, here's a book. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I call your, who are you going to call? You know what I mean? So from that standpoint, and I didn't have to like discipline wise, I don't know what he'll say about it, but then I didn't have to deal with a lot of issues that he created. It was just the normal stuff. And then the, some of it was like, which I'm sure you're finding out is just the 
stupid teenage <laughs> boy stuff. It's like yeah. <sighs> the testosterone kicks yeah. in and it made you stupid. Mm -hmm. And I told, I told him that. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you remember? Did you outgrow it? He did. He did. <laughs> Hold on. There was a, I got called into his middle school. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> I got called into this middle school and the teacher's like, he had this like big assignment and then he didn't hand it in. And I'm like, well, I know he was working on this stuff because there was a floppy disk and all that oh. back then. Do you remember that? Not that particular. I mean, that was a, that was a ongoing issue. I heard <laughs> about the cigarette. School. And he goes, no, the thing was like, <laughs> he's like, well, I already did it. And I'm like, well, he did it. And the teacher's like, well, he didn't hand it in. I'm just like, you did the hard stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you just didn't give it to her? It was Are nonsensical. You stupid? <laughs> there was a lot of stuff. I don't know. I just, I wasn't a good student. I wasn't good academically. It wasn't because I wasn't intelligent. I no. was good about it. I got the work done. I just didn't, I didn't care about school. I think a lot of that probably stems from the fact that I was just very distracted with everything else I was going on in life. And I get not to use it as a, as a crutch by any means, but I'm just saying, I, I, I was kind of all over the place when you as you are when you're a teenager right. like you've said but um a lot of that gets uh exacerbated yeah. when you know there's there's just other parts of your life that and can you, be and a you, little you went like he went, so. he went like this he went like I was, yeah i was playing basketball <laughs> <laughs> like like, like at recess like what yeah i, I it wouldn't commute <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, you did the work. <laughs> Hand it in. <laughs> and it, I, I opened up the little folder with the floppy disk. And I'm like, it's all there. The papers, everything, it's right there. And the teacher goes, oh, well, I'll I'll take it for grading. And then I'm like, yeah. we're not, we're not going to do this again, are we? And he didn't. Yeah. But it was just like, I, I just, it stuck in my head so much all these years later. I mean, geez, 30, you know, almost 30 years later. Yeah. It's like, crazy. what? Thing. Yeah, I wasn't a good student at all. I, I wasn't and like, i wasn't i didn't lose it i was just like i yeah, yeah. don't get it yeah i don't know was, that, there's stuff i know i did like i tell the kids and i tell melissa you know like oh you have no idea how lucky you are i don't understand like how good you how break you get you get you know you're so spoiled yelled at every now and again it's it's much different world now than it was back then and can you I imagine trying to raise kira with how sensitive she is oh, she's really sensitive. she's really sensitive you can't say boo to kira you can only tell Kira a good job. I, I felt, I f like tried to, like you saw today, I was like, take a deep breath. She's yeah. very fragile. She, she has my emotional told to side. vacuum. Huh? Because she got told to vacuum and that she didn't do a good job. Right. But because it wasn't praise, like she's very, very sensitive right. child. Especially now for the I, same reasons. I can't imagine. Like I'm always like, Jeremy, just. But if you, if you know that about her, <laughs> I, I, I don't it. think, he, I don't think you can. You're not going to get pr mm. production out of hammering her. Never. Because no. you just hammer her. Oh, it's not yeah. going to work. No. It's counter counterproductive. Yeah. Not with Kira. No. no. You have no. to be super sensitive with Kira. And then she'll get mad at you and she won't forgive you for at least 24 hours. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she holds a grudge. She definitely has my hyper emotional. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And <laughs> yeah. she would not like come out of it. It's no. like, you need to take a deep breath and come, yeah. come out of that. Yeah. Because you need to get in. She just... I'm mad now. Yeah. I remember her giving that look when she was like in the <laughs> stroller mm -hmm. at a and soccer game. Like, like in the, she was in the little carrier. Mm -hmm. And I remember yeah. she just, <laughs> that look that she gives. And then was it you that said, uh oh, or was it me? Oh, I don't know. We were like, uh oh, it's, it's the Korean. Uh oh. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> she had that look and it was nothing. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Where did that come from? You're like one. Yeah, you can't correct Kira. Um, Kira seeks praise all the time she she wants to please all, all the time, time. Yeah. and so then if she falls short of praise or pleasing you <laughs> she just becomes meltdown. absolutely dev yeah. devastated yeah and no, then meltdown. mad at you for yeah. 24 hours <laughs> yeah so melissa and i made you a grandfather at a very very early age because you had me at 23 uh we had <laughs> novea on my 23rd birthday so you were 46 yeah. that's not too far away from where melissa and i currently are which is crazy Jeez. to think yeah. about yeah. Um, what is what is the difference been between being a, a a single parent for the majority of the time that you were a parent to a younger child versus being a grandfather? Well, I mean, I don't have to obviously deal with the day to day stuff like you did, like you know, you guys have to now. Yeah, but it's um, I get to be you know, like today, I get to be like, oh, it's okay. You saw me, like it's all right. Twice with her, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> or you know, Eli joke around, Kaimani joke around. It's it's like I can be the, I don't want to say the cool grandpa, but I can because you know me, I'll be like, no, we're not, 
we're not doing that. Yeah. I don't have any qualms about being like, no, and you can be mad. Okay, be mad. Just less responsibility. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, remember that time I made Nevea cry, but at, yeah. at my house, <laughs> like, scolding her and scolding her about something, where and she was just like, Wah. and you guys are like, well, she's not used to hearing that from you. It's like, well, sorry, what she did was wrong. I don't even remember what it was, and I'm like, no, we're not doing that. And I must have a look on my face. So I, I don't have any qualms about that, but it was um. I miss I miss you guys since you guys moved here because mm. it's farther mm -hmm. away. I mean, it's it's a drive. But I feel like we see you now more since you've retired. Oh, definitely. Than even when we lived three right. hours away. Right, definitely. Because I can just, you know, I'll be gone for a week. And Mer yeah. Meredith's fine. She's like, yeah, you know, when you get back, drive carefully. Um, and I tell people that I'm like, I can just come over here. Yeah, it's still a long it's a long drive. Melissa and I wanted to take a second to talk to you about the sponsor of today's episode, Delete Me. Over the past four months, we've been using the services provided by Delete Me in hopes of getting some of our personal information removed from the internet. We've not only been impressed with how much of our personal information they've been able to find, but also delete on our behalf. So it turns out that there are data brokers out there collecting huge amounts of your personal identifiable information from government sites, public information sites, and sadly, even your own social media. They will gather things like your birthday, your social security number, your address, even your family members. They then package it all up, license it, create a profile on you, and they will sell it to other data brokers, companies, or pretty much anyone with an interest in your personal information. Yeah, thankfully, Delete Me is really easy to use. You basically just sign up, they send you a welcome email, and then you can get started right away. In just the past four months, Delete Me has found over 100 data brokers between the two of us that had our personal information. Delete Me has removed over 200 listings, and the best part is they continually scan the web to make sure that our personal information doesn't pop up elsewhere. Melissa and I signed up for the family plan. That way, every member of our family is protected all under one plan. This is particularly important when it comes to your elderly family members as unfortunately, they are so oftentimes a target for these scammers. To give Delete Me a try for yourself and for those you care about, just click the link below or go to joindeleteme.com slash GSL and use our code at GSL to get 20% off all consumer plans. We want to thank Delete Me for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Now let's get back to our conversation. I mean, especially with my... My back and my knees. If I don't get out and move around, it's you see me when I get out of the truck. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So that brings it up to like a really personal thing. So you became a parent at 23 years old in the very much 22. the same manner of oh, 22, 22. Yeah. very much in the same manner as us. Like, you the, know, the joke was dating. Um, how old were you when you became a dad? And I said, 22 young. Yeah. That's the joke. That's oh, how I remember 22. You were 22? Why am I doing the math wrong? I mean, it's fine. I thought this whole yeah. time I thought I was 23. I'm born in 61. You were born in 83. So that's really oh, young. Yeah. What? Mind blown. I thought it was 23 this whole time. Holy cow. Yeah. Bad math. So very young. You weren't married. And then it didn't ultimately work out after a lot of struggle. Mm -hmm. So when Jeremy called you up at the same age, 22, <laughs> and said, Dad, I've just gone and done the exact same thing you did. Do you were, remember my were you Do you remember how I my remember response? Your response? Yeah, I do. I, yeah. Totally. Yeah. You, you, you're like, I got to call you back. <laughs> and then Jeremy melted into a puddle in the living room. I was like, sorry. Ah. I didn't mean it that way. It was just like, I need to process. Process it. Yeah. It's That's exactly it what Jeremy would do if he got the same phone call. Yeah. He because to, I feel like you'd be like, I have to call. Which it's, kid? Which it's kid? Because um, that would matter. Yeah. On the one hand, it's shocking. On the other hand, like, yeah, they're adults. I mean, you know what I mean? So it wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I wasn't angry. I was just kind of more like, I just need to process this. <laughs> and even Meredith was like, what, what happened? And she goes, what happened? And I told her, and you told him you'd call him back. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because I need to process this. Jeremy hung up the phone. He was like, oh God. No, <laughs> I, was like, but I, was, I was so, I remember being like literally <laughs> terrified to, to tell call. You. It, it I think, like a how while. far along were you? Five months? No, not It was that. pretty no. four? No, it, I think it was like three. And I'm like, no, because you not. were like, this might not work out. And then, like, at no. the three month mark, I'm like, Jeremy, you need to tell your dad. No, I put it off as long as I possibly could. He did. He could. put it off a long time. I was like, you have to call your dad. Yeah. And I, then I, I, I didn't. Man, it's cold in here. Um, <laughs> I got to see. Run hot. It's become an ongoing no, thing. No, it's, it's cold in here. Yes. Like, my, look, it's cold in here. Yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't. I, f I felt bad, you know, <laughs> after the fact, because I really like, I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't handle that. Right. But it was, it was done. And I called you back like the next day, like, okay, well. No, it wasn't even the next day. It was that same day. It was like same an day. hour later. Yeah. yeah. It was like, okay. Yeah. So what are we going to do here? Yeah. It was oh, we'll come day. down there. We'll fly down there and all that. 
And then we came down and you were like, <laughs> we were like, oh my God, Meredith's like, it's such a, she's such a tiny little thing. How is that happening? And I'm like, yep, it's all out, it's all out there in front. And remember, I don't remember, you were like, that little apartment, and, mm-hmm. and let's go have some barbecue. So we went to the store and we're like, you want some meat? And you're like, oh, meat, steaks are really good. <laughs> Broke. We're so poor. <laughs> yeah. We and were I'm working like, no, no, at that we're, restaurant. We're going to get everything. Meredith's like, let's get some like flame and some T bones. We can cook them on by the pool at your yeah. apartment. Oh, yeah. You're, I remember that. We didn't even so have we, our were, we were living in like a 600, I think it was 500 something square foot apartment. apartment. Yeah. Uh, one bedroom. One bedroom. And, we, you know, Melissa's pregnant. We were both working crappy jobs at the time, not oh, making geez. anything for money. And yep. I'm saving, I'm squirreling away. Every freaking dollar. This that sounds I could. so familiar. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's it's very cyclical. It's yeah. it's coming back around. And that, that may be why in my brain, like with the hardships and mm-hmm. everything, I I think like oh I need to process this. But it was fine. Like I said, I wasn't I wasn't mad. I wasn't sad. I wasn't angry. You weren't I wasn't, concerned that like history was. It's gonna my work. job to be concerned, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I think my brain would. If I had gone through what you went through, I think my brain would go to crap. Now my son's going to do the same thing. Like, that's where, I don't know. I didn't even think of that. I, the really? only thing I thought of was like, well, this is going to, and I tell people, even in my instance, this this was going to make you grow up real quick. What if I had been terrible? <laughs> but, you, but you weren't, as far as we knew. <laughs> yeah, but you barely even knew me. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And you guys, I just remember like, oh, and then you, there was the whole like secret plan. We're going to go to... We're gonna go to Vegas. We're, she's getting a job, and and, oh, yeah. and he didn't even tell me. It was like all, oh. and then one day he's like, "We're just we're we're." I forget what we were arguing about because it was something stupid, you know. Oh my gosh! You told your dad during an argument that we were. Yeah, married. I don't remember. I don't remember how I told uh, that. I too. do, I do, because oh, we were having an argument, and he, and he was like, "Well, you know, you it's the it's the one one day I'm not gonna be here, and you know you don't have to worry about it. In fact." And then, he just, <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, oh, okay. And I don't even remember what we were arguing with something, probably something stupid. Like, you yeah. know, I don't know, do this or put that away, whatever. I don't even remember. Yeah. But I do remember the, where you were like, well, you know, one day I'm not going to be living under your roof. I'll, I'll show you. In fact, <laughs> we're going to go to Vegas if she gets this job. And I was like, huh. I went and told Meredith. I'm like, apparently she's applying for a job in Vegas and if she gets it, they're going to go. And this dumb guy that's known her three months is going to go with her. Yeah. <laughs> that's so yeah. stupid. Was when it you... three months? Three months, you think? Or... Man, no, it wasn't it was longer long. Than longer than that, I think. It was not long. Um, we moved to Vegas in... October? So, no, no it, was, oh. it was way before the school year. It was like in May. Yeah, it was way. Because the weather was really nice when we loaded up the little tiny I mean, U-Haul it, with the skateboard. I think it was, yeah, oh gosh. Oh, and his Bob Marley poster that he said he was going to hang in the no, living room. I was like, mm, the skateboard. And happening. you took the skateboard and I'm like, Man, they're, they're, they're taking everything. They're taking a skateboard. <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine my kid loading up a U-Haul and being like, oh, make sure you grab oh, my skateboard. It's, um, <laughs> it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, when you were, I leaves. warn you now. You were so sad, oh, no. and it is I felt heartbreaking. So bad. Yeah, no, we're not going to deal that's, with that. Well, that's, that's why I. A... That's why I joked with Eli today when he says, "What's the worst? You know what the worst pain in the world is?" And I go, "Yeah, having your heart broken." And he didn't. He didn't compute. He's like, yeah. literally, like having. I'm like, never mind. <laughs> we'll but it's heartbreaking. When I left, yes. Why? Because you're gone. Yeah. And that's your only one. Yep. So you went. You went just straight emptiness. Cold there was turkey. no. When you have lots of kids, nope. there's a little bit of a transition. Yep. You experience it nope. and you experience it. Well, and it's weird, too, because I go back again. You know, it was it was my dad and I for long for my time. entire Yeah. I mean, from the time I was a little kid up until when I left and I was like, you know, 20 years old. So yeah. I feel horrible that I was the cause of that because I just wanted to go do something different. <laughs> it has to happen. It's, it's natural. It's fine. It's all part of just part of life. I mean, you know, not to be like the old guy, but, you know, there's a road and then. There's yeah. a fork. Yeah. The fork in the road for me was moving up here or staying in Hawaii. Yeah. There was a fork in the road. What am I going to do? What's my what's my priorities? And Is we it, had to sacrifice to move up here. And I tell people that. I'm like, we sacrificed to move up here. We left family. We left culture. We left food. We left home. We left familiarity, familiarity yeah, comfort, everything. everything. My whole life, I was there 38 years, born and raised. Yeah. Parents born and raised. Grandparents born and raised. And all of a sudden, from and from... 80 degrees to 40 degrees and all that entailed. And it was hard. The first yeah. year sucked. Oh, it was horrible. I hated it. I, you know, sucked. Yeah, I hated it. Yep. Isn't it amazing how how life seems to, like, really, when you whittle it all down, life boils down to really just a few decisions. Yep. 
that that yeah. determine the way things yep. go. It's it's amazing. That fork in the road. Yeah, those yeah. those those moments of hey, I need to go, you know, left yep. or right. Left or right. It's so amazing to me that. And I mean, that's like, what like I'll move out here. Same that's thing. That's what what in my opinion. That's what. Um, makes people, you know, makes people who they are is yeah. the decisions that they make. Because you know, you think about it. Even even people that make mistakes, some mistakes, mm-hmm. there's no coming back no. from. Mm-hmm. You know, and God, I made my share when I was younger. Thank God, oh. I didn't have a negative outcome. Yeah. of of stupid things. But it's just a few, like a handful of those de- those decisions dictate yep. your entire life. life. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, it's so crazy. Yep. Think about. It. Yeah. Yeah. I I I talk to these people I know that boat, and they're older they're like in their at the time they were in like their late 70s and they were very conservative and very knowledgeable and very sweet they had raised a family they had grandkids and so we started talking and um somehow she was like oh your history what's your history and i told her all about like my you know great great grandparents left the azores in portugal to come all the way to hawaii think about it all the way across the atlantic all the way around south america to california get on another boat to go to Honolulu, get on another boat to go to Kauai or stay in Honolulu in the 18, mid 1870s. It was crazy, mind boggling. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, why did they come to Hawaii from the Azores? And I'm like, oh, because the Azores, the economy sucked and they couldn't own private property. They couldn't own private property and they just wanted a better life. And she goes, without missing a beat, she goes, well, isn't that the reason you moved here from Hawaii? Yeah. And it was shocking. It was like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It was so simple, but it was yeah. like, <laughs> to a less, oh lesser mind. extent, it's not as, as not dramatic, as drastic, but yeah, yeah. Same reasoning. But the same reasoning, like it, a better life. Same because, thing for us, you know, know we, uh, it, I couldn't, I couldn't do it there. We couldn't do, I couldn't retire there. I guarantee you I'd still be working Yeah, because HPD didn't pay a lot and the cost of living there is just yeah. ridiculous. People the, are like, the, oh, then now you're retired. Are you going to move back home? <laughs> Sure, no. because I want the Powerball. I'm just going to move back home <laughs> and buy a house on the beach. It's yeah. a weird progression to think that your grand, your great grandparents, you said, great grandparents, great grandparents were the yeah. ones to make that long journey. You, you, you basically did the same thing mm-hmm. to a lesser extent. Mm-hmm. We, we take it a step further, make the same type of move for the same reasoning. Yep, it's again very interesting the way yeah, things and, and play it, out. Uh, the, the reason I say that is because you know people ask me like, oh, don't you miss Hawaii? And I'm like, yeah, well, every day. Mm-hmm. Every day, because that's my home every day. I live here, but that's my home. Mm-hmm. But it's not so overpowering that I would sacrifice everything that I have to be back there. Because yeah. again, the fork in the road, look at everything that's happened to me from being up here and now everything that's happened to you to being up here. Mm-hmm. So none of that would exist and you wouldn't know it, but right. none of it would exist if that fork in the road. Some alternative universe. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I knew... Um, just being there, I was like, man, I'm not making that much money and I'm, it's hard to live here. It's expensive, you know, it's expensive to live here. And I love the weather. I love the beach. I love to just hang out in the sand, and warm sand in my feet. It's awesome. Have a cold beer. It's awesome. But yeah, I knew it was like, eventually there's going to come a point where I need to not do this anymore. And then what? Yeah. Does it does it bum you out though that our family has kind of lost its its roots? In, it does in Hawaii. It does. Yeah, it, it, My leg. The the I tell people the legacy is gone mm-hmm. because the properties have been sold. You know, yeah. your grandparents sold the houses, and like I have no ties there anymore unless I yeah. want to move back, and that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So the legacy of being in Hawaii since I mean, you're talking what 150 years mm-hmm. or what almost is done. It's now in Idaho. Right, 125 years. Let's say 125 years, because it was, two, let's say 2000. So, yeah. 100, you know, 100, 115, 120 years gone, 125 years gone. Mm-hmm. But it is what, to use that stupid saying, it is what it is. As I don't, I can't control it. Yeah, it's how so things go. am I going to be bitter about it? Or am I just going to be like, oh, it's, it, it's good. I made a good life here. And when she told me that, like, oh, isn't that why you moved here? Like I said, it literally, I, I literally, she stopped me in my tracks. Clicked. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God. It was so enlightening. It definitely bumps me out. Even the kids, they have zero sense of, of you know, that local culture. Yeah, well. and I feel like I'm responsible for that. And I, I like drop the ball in that sense. So it, it, it bothers me. And I just, I wish they, there's no going back. There's no turning no. back. You know, I can't like take them to Martha Street and be like, oh, that's, that's grandma and no. grandpa's house. And cousin house, another family lives no. there. And, and well, it's uh, like, I, like I said today, you know, the whole like, um, I want chaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should be asking yeah. for a boogie board. Yeah, exactly. You don't need chaps right. here. You need a boogie board and some fins. Yeah. So it's just, it, 
It's yeah. weird, and it's outside of your control, but it's it's it is. Yeah, it I is. Know, it's totally different. Do you ever picture like when you thought about grandkids or Jeremy's kids? Did you ever picture having like this total howly grandkid that wanted to be in the rodeo and ride horses? <laughs> no, that's why I joke. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what, what happened? What happened? <laughs> right? I always say that. What happened? <laughs> joke. It's a joke, yeah. but it's kind of a funny way of looking at it. Like, what the hell happened? Yeah, life can be so random like that. Yeah, or you just. One generation, two generations down, yeah. it's so different. I pulled yeah. him down the beach on a boogie board when he could barely walk. Remember that? Oh, if you were, yeah. probably too small. To no, remember. I remember surfing with you as a teenager, yeah. like going to Port Lock, China Walls, all yep. that. And yep. yeah, it's all you know, yep. back in the day. Like that's what I say when I when I relay those relay those memories to the kids, it's like they can't even they, they can't even picture nope. the setting. They don't they have zero sense of of no. what that means. It's right. so it's so uh even when you me. when you gave them all the food and the snacks and stuff, yeah. and they're all they were all like, Ugh. yeah. But there's no memories no. tied to it for them, you no. know, where no. there are for me. That's nostalgic. No. That's that's my childhood. That's, and that it's one thing that I appreciate a lot about Meredith is she really tries to um, be supportive of keeping that alive for me. Like she'll make stuff food wise that she makes really good chicken long rice. She likes it. Mm -hmm. We went to a party and uh, a birthday party for a Filipino guy I knew mm -hmm. from Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, he made pork gusantes. And then she's like, I, I explained to her. And she's like, oh, I'll try it. And she's like, oh my God. And then she makes it at home. Mm. Now she she likes it, but she doesn't have to do that. She could be like, no, we're having meatloaf or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she does that. If you've been to our house, you see all the artwork on the walls, all, all the Hawaii stuff. And people come over, they're people that don't know me. They're like, because again, I don't look like I'm from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's a lot of white artwork here. Yeah. Do you oh. like Maui? And, my, and Meredith will be like, oh, yeah, my husband's born and raised there. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, cool. So she's really been supportive of that. Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate that. And I love her for it. It's considering, you know, she's blonde hair, green eyes, <laughs> born in Washington State. Yeah. yeah. So, but she's, she's tries to keep it alive, but it's the same thing. She has no ties to it she yeah. goes there she's like i'm not going in that water that water is dangerous I'm like, well it's just, are you kidding this is fine this is fun no so it's different, it's it's different. Yeah. and they're going to be the same when they go there they're going to be like mm -hmm. you got to watch eli and the sun so yeah <laughs> you, better, I know. you better get some good sunscreen we ran out of color by the time we got to him yeah so yeah all that pigment got used up on kaimani yeah that's fine it is what it is those pictures of of me when i was little and and him, if you look at those pictures, yeah. it's it's kind of shocking. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I don't know. Even so. the exp some of the expressions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't. I'm sure I wasn't as smart as he is because he's a little whip. <laughs> I don't know where he gets that from. It's um, interesting. He asks yeah. a lot of questions. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to know everything about everything. everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he'll and he'll almost like research it, mm -hmm. like for oh, like yeah. for schoolwork. Yeah, yeah yes. on his own. He on his own. Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, oh, it's cool. Now I have that knowledge, which is good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would be really supportive of that. Yeah. Because that's, you know. I think that's the natural um, inquisitive mind of a child. And it, it, I think a lot of that gets repressed in a lot of kids with with the system of like, hey, fall in line. Correct. Don't worry about that. This is what you need to focus Correct. on right now. And, and them being homeschooled, they don't have that. Yeah. So. Oh, there's a big difference. Yeah. 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 And there's a big difference. Well, I think you can be kind of. He's a quirky kid. I mean, he is. He is. And there's no one to tell him that he's being, like kids would say you're being weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. And then he would repress that and then right. he would change. Yeah. Right. And so he doesn't have anyone to say that. So right. his interests just, I mean, he dives in. He jumps in he, both feet. In everything he does, he dives in until it, until it wears out and yeah. then it's like dumped. Well, because like, it's like he learned everything about that and then he's like, okay, I'm ready to learn something new yeah. now. So yeah. he'll be an interesting one to watch grow up. Yeah. And if it, you know, if he keeps on that track, he'll probably be something that he, you, I would think, and I'm only, I can't read the future, but I would think that he would be the one to be like, oh no, I'm going to go to school and, and educate myself on whatever. Yeah. yeah. But you never know. Yeah. You no. just never know. Yeah, I don't the know. The bull rider thing is insane. <laughs> He's really into that right now. You I, might as well go step in front of a bus because it's insane. I just foster whatever interest yeah. he has because so far he's outgrown right. everything. But there is going to be a time when he doesn't outgrow something and right. he becomes that. So I should probably be careful what I foster. But yeah. right yeah. now he's into it. I have someone to ride horses with, so that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> What's your uh, parenting advice to us? You you alluded to the fact a couple of times that yeah, it's the it's tough to see your kids grow up. Um, you know, things happen in the teenage years. What what do you what are your words of advice to pass along to us 
based on your uh, personal experience? Oh boy, that's a really that's a really heavy question. <laughs> that's what we do here. Huh? That's, that's what, what we do in here. <laughs> yeah, that's a really heavy. That's a really heavy question. Well, we do our best, but it's hard in the moment. Like you said, like in retrospect, I'm sure there are a lot of lessons to be learned, right? Like looking back, thinking back. Yeah. I think like I was probably, I would probably say, like we're talking about Kira, I would probably say you have to be selective because you're not going to get a response from her for being hard, for being like mm -hmm. I was with you. That's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And when you got four of them, I only had you mm -hmm. to worry about. So that would be one, because I think I was, you know, like I said before, I wasn't perfect and I'm sure I made mistakes and I'm sure there are times when you could look back and go, my dad was kind of a dick and as an adult, but I tried my best to do it the right way. The, the emptiness part sucked really hard. Yeah, that was really hard. Yeah, That's Meredith, it was really hard. I know. It, it was worked. like, it was like, it was like the house, people were joking like, hey, your kid's gone, woohoo, at work. And I'm like, yeah, like it was like a death. I'm not yeah. gonna exaggerate it. It's not an exaggeration to say it was like, I was like, like in mourning. No. Yeah. I mean, you don't, uh, we're not to that point yet, but we're, we're, we're closing close. in on it, yeah. uh, in on it. And it's, um, it's already a struggle. I, I mean, you, if you watch the podcast, this, it comes up like almost every single time that it's just Melissa and I talking. Cause we are, we're dealing with that right now. And we're trying to, I'm like, I'm trying to, I feel like I'm mentally trying to prepare for it. Like I'm, I put myself through mental repetitions. I dream about it. Um, I'm, I'm literally trying to envision because you know, when, like like I said before, all of my focus has always been on the fa on on family for the right. last you know seventeen almost eighteen years now, and right. it's all always been about providing, taking care of everybody, making sure everybody you know everybody has everything they need. Like, hey, it's always six of us, six of us. Do the head count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And that's going to change, and that's going to be tough to deal with, even from yeah. Melissa and I. Like, yes. Yeah. It's with our relationship, you know, it's, and it was Nevea who was the one who sparked all of that change uh, internally within us and 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 refocused and, and uh, hit the reset button as far as mindset goes. And so to see her getting older, if she decides to, to fly the coop or stick around, um, either way, eventually it's going to come to an end. And that's, that's, that's so hard to, uh, to, to what she, deal what with. I would, I would probably say what you have to realize is it's just part of life, even though it's kind of going to suck. Um, and like I said earlier, it's kind of my job to worry. And I don't think that ends. Like when you call and said, oh, we're, <laughs> I'm quitting and we're going to Idaho and we're gonna <laughs> live in a trailer. Remember my reaction? I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And remember, I was like, what are you gonna do for medical? Yeah. You know, Cause that's, again, it's my job. It's not my, they're not my kids, but mm -hmm. they're my grandkids. But then it's my job to worry about you. And I don't think that's gonna stop until mm -hmm. I'm, not here anymore yeah no it's I, just I natural so you you have to kind of expect that but at the same time fly little birdie fly yeah you know what i mean and they're gonna i mean you stumbled and there was stumbled and there was times where like you know oh i can go to costco and buy diapers and show up at your girlfriend's parents house <laughs> to give you diaper oh hi how's everything oh going? jeremy and melissa still living in the attic well i uh, that's all i could do i i you know, and we, Mer Meredith and I talked, and before you guys came back from Vegas, before that thing, we we're like, well, they can just stay here. I mean, because mm -hmm. we had those two extra rooms, mm -hmm. and we're like, they can come stay here. Mm -hmm. And then you guys are like, no, we we're gonna stay in Melissa's parents' house. And we're like, okay, well, we don't want to. The offer's there, but we don't want to. You will do this. That's not gonna work. Yeah. So you never even told us that. We didn't. Uh. -uh. Oh. <laughs> I thought I thought we did. Oh yeah, Meredith and I talked. We we're like, yeah, it's fine. They can oh. stay here. We it's all good. Yeah. We had an attic space. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what you guys said. You guys said, no, no, we're fine because I remember moved driving back, driving. The maybe you talked it. Maybe you guys talked about it. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Remember driving the U-Haul and you had the red Mustang. Yeah. Red oh Mustang. gosh, the Barbie car. The Barbie car. Yeah. yeah the, the baby carrier like didn't fit. You had to slide the seat to get the baby carrier, yeah. in. she was all like falling out of oh, the yeah. seat to. You had to turn her like upside down. And I remember in. like putting the iPod. I'm like, this is going to be a lot of hours in this noisy <laughs> U-Haul with all this crap in the back. And put the iPod. This is right. when we were moving back. So yeah. you're, yeah. what uh, you referenced when I let you know that we were going to, I was going to quit my my career. Uh, we had the same career in the same state. You were very familiar. 
I said, I'm letting all that go. We are going to move here. We're going to move out to this property that we bought. Mm -hmm. extremely I hadn't even, been, I hadn't even been here yet. I hadn't yeah. even been here yet, but you knew it was out in the middle of nowhere. nowhere. And we were, our plan was no to live power, in a no travel water. trailer, the six of us. Yeah. Your initial reaction was, was yeah, pretty like fair and seemingly impartial. Like, okay, okay. Like kind of like you said, right. but did you think we were crazy? Um, no, I didn't think you're crazy. And I, it's just a risk. I mean, it, everything's risk. a risk, yeah. you know, and you're, and I'm like, what are you going to do? And you, you were like, well, <laughs> I might try and get a job with, um, well, customs and yeah. border protection. And then, cause there's a, there's a border crossing. And in my mind, I'm like, you're going to be the lowest person on the totem pole. So mm -hmm. you're going to go to Nogales, Arizona yeah. and work a crappy, I'm almost said something else, a crappy <laughs> schedule <laughs> and you know what I mean? Yeah because I knew the realities of it. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, well, I mean. Well, I brought up YouTube as well as an option. What do you yeah. think about that? And I. <laughs> what is that? Because we are very commonly asked what your reaction to that conversation was. And I, I'm always like, I think I think you were just kind of mystified and baffled yeah. at the time because. Totally. You didn't you didn't have an understanding of what that meant. Well, yeah. what does Nobody that did. mean? Like, I'm going to quit my job and we're going to move out into a trailer in the middle of nowhere and we're going to make videos and put Correct. them on an internet <laughs> right. site. And I'm a boomer, not to be like, I'm not, you know, I'm not some old curmudgeon, but I'm a boomer. So this is foreign. I'm going to use foreign, especially at the time. I mean, to, to me, YouTube was like, um, how do I take apart a Whirlpool <laughs> refrigerator ice maker? Yeah. Oh, take apart a refrigerator Whirlpool. That, that's what yeah. in, my, in my mind. So you're like, what? Right. Yeah, <laughs> of my mind. Or, you know, inane stupid people dancing around or whatever whatever, whatever the <laughs> stupid thing people do like ah oh, remember yeah. we we're talking to yeah. everything is oh my <laughs> god nail face yes that, it's it's that and that's what i thought of and i didn't know anything about this i still kind of don't really understand it but whatever <laughs> and people ask me like what do they do and i tell them and they're like oh some of the younger guys get it yeah and it's an age thing so mm -hmm. yeah. i would say people like 35 and younger, maybe yes. even like your age and younger, 40. We're old, we're old for the, right. for the, the platform yes. and the space. 35 and younger kind of get it. Yeah. And they're, cause they're kind of like, oh yeah, you know, if, if it's successful then, mm -hmm. and then I was like, oh, it's like, especially some of the, the younger, more techie people at work mm -hmm. that, cause guys, the young guys, I had guys that worked me that were like 22, I'm 60, you're 22. Yeah. My granddaughter is 16, 15, whatever she was. So there's, we have nothing in common. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those guys, they would talk about stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, I saw this <laughs> video on, um, it's a, it's something, a gaming. I don't know. It's like, like where they, uh, oh, uh, see, this is even for yes. me. I know what you're talking about though. Yes. It's like a gaming where you game. Like a gaming platform. Gaming platform uh, with like other streaming. people. But they have stuff like YouTube Twitch. on it. Is it Twitch? Twitch, yeah. yes. Where you, and they have like streaming and YouTube stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I saw this video. I'm like, I don't even, I saw this video of this dog standing on its head and it was chasing down a moose that was pink. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they'd be showing other people. It was so foreign to me. I'm like, this is so bizarre. Yeah. So I, I, like I told you, I'm like, mm, okay, I, let's see what happens. No, that's weird. It's it's still weird to me. Uh, yeah. I wasn't going to be like, you're insane. Like what my dad would say or something like that. You're insane. Get yeah. a Monday through Friday <laughs> job. Go do. Yeah. 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 I wasn't going to say that because yeah. it's a different, it's a, you know, the internet's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It's oh, it really it good, mm -hmm. but it really sucks at oh, the yeah. same time. There's some e pure evil on there. Agreed. And I don't know how good it's for society in general. I completely agree with you. Especially when you see what's going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it, it, it's not something that I'm going to control. And if it's successful as it's, as it is, like you guys through your, through work, I'm not saying, you know, I tell people like everybody thinks it's so easy. Yes. If you had to come up with something to entertain people weekly how long do you think you can sustain that yeah. it's pretty hard after 300 yeah. videos it does become very very difficult uh -huh. and uh -huh. then yeah and your audience will get mad at you too like why are you doing this or that and um so it makes it tricky because then now you're answering to a lot of people that have supported you a long time. Yep. So it does matter what they think. Yep. You do care what they think. Yeah, and, they, they're well, vested. Yeah, people mm -hmm. are like, why do you care what those people think? And it's like, because they've been here mm -hmm. for us for four years. Mm -hmm. Like We do care what they think. And it's something that at the time, especially was so new. Now, mm -hmm. you know, now it's not so much. I, I look at people yeah. that go like, oh, um, this girl's an influencer. What the 
hell does that I mean? hate that term. That's such a, <laughs> it seems like such an arrogant term. Like, who do you think you're influencing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're not an influencer. You're, I just saw this thing. An uh, entertainer. Some, some people make these whatever channels and then they're like, this is how to live out of the United States. And that's like mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, okay, well, you do you. I'm, and you know, I'm like, there's, there's certain things that I don't agree with, but I'm not going to go, Rah! like you do you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, uh, like masks, this mask. I, I saw a lady who's a friend of mine, her husband passed away and she's in her sixties. And I saw her at a Volkswagen, beautiful sunny day in the summer. And she's like, oh, I'm really sorry, but I, I feel more comfortable wearing a mask because I gave her a hug. And I'm like, I'm like, Diane, I don't care. You do you. Yeah. If you're yeah. more comfortable doing that, fine. The you mask don't. thing drives me crazy. Like I have to totally vent on the mask thing because although I'm not a big mask mandate person at all. Yes. There are people that do feel more comfortable right. with that. And then when with our work that we've done with children's cancer, there's yep. families now because masks have become so politicized yep. where if you're wearing a mask, then you're this- uh, Virtuous. Yeah, you're yep. or you're virtue signaling or yep. you're being, you're like you're yep. expecting other people to right. wear a mask. They pat you on the back. Oh, yeah. you're so good. Yeah. And so now people are becoming uncomfortable with wearing masks and you don't know what those people are dealing with. You don't know if they have a, a child that just came from right. an oncology visit. Right. You don't know if maybe they have a virus they don't want to spread around. Or I have a friend that I work with that has MS and she has to wear a mask right. when she travels. And 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 she feels uncomfortable right. doing so now. Diane is is pushing 70. Yeah. And this was when, you know, all the COVID had just ended. Granted, it was summer, mm -hmm. but COVID had ended and everything was starting to open up. But she still, because her husband passed away of cancer. He died of just yeah. horrible so she's already yeah. in a so she yeah she's not in a really good place and it's been a while but still i get it like you're almost 70 and yeah. you don't want to get sick you do you yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah. i think it's so frustrating to me to watch people be judged was, now on wearing masks it was so sweet how she was like i'm i'm so sorry and i'm like mm. the no. fact that she felt she had to say yeah. sorry is yeah. that yeah and i'm like i don't care yeah yeah that's not one of those things that that it was you know, never I get, a I get hung up on. I don't before. care. No, right. If it makes you feel more comfortable Even in a store, about it. You know, but, especially yeah, you see yeah. like, old, you know, old, people older than me, yeah. like somebody who's 80 walking through Safeway with yeah. a mask on. And no explanation needed. Whatever okay. you want to do, fine. Yeah. That doesn't, that does, that's not something that yeah. bothers me. And no. that's, again, it's not something that infringes upon my personal Correct. freedoms right. and liberties. So right. do whatever you want yeah. to do. You do you. Yes. Yeah. And I've yeah. used that, I've used that line on a lot of people where yeah. they're like, you know, I don't, I'm not buying Bud Light because you do you. Fine. Yeah. Again, I don't really care. There's certain things that I want to do that maybe, you would say I shouldn't do, yeah. but I'm going to do me, right. and that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Right, especially with like friends or you know people that I know, acquaintances. I don't want to. I don't want to. The world's there's enough of this already. Right. I don't yeah. want to be like yeah. that guy to yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I know, it's crazy, but all right. Anything else? I don't think so. All right, Dad. Thanks for doing this. You're yeah, welcome, we've son. Been, we've been asking you for a little bit, and it's never been the right time, so I'm glad yeah. you're able to make time for it. No, yeah. I think it's good that we all hop on here and we have something that we can refer back to on video because, uh, like we, Melissa and I were talking about last week, it's so it's been we've been doing this long enough now to where we go back and watch videos from a few years ago. It's like, oh yeah, look at that. Like, look at mm -hmm. how small the kids were. Look at how you know look how much younger we look. Yeah. Look at the property. Look at what that. It's it's yeah. good to have Young, a record that we younger can go we back look. To. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it's good. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, you're and, welcome. Um, glad you're here. Glad you're out visiting. And, and thank you for raising me, taking care of me. I, I love you, son. I I'm very you proud too. of you. <laughs> thank you. You have, you have been a, a <laughs> good husband and a good dad, and you've been a good son. Thank you. So. Well, thank you for providing a good example for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you, you did a tremendous job raising Jeremy. I'm super lucky. I tried. I, 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 mean, I, did, I did have help. Well. I mean, honestly, I did have help. So You did a good job, and... Jeremy's doing a good job. He's hard on himself, and like you're hard on yourself. Yeah. I, I think that's just maybe that's a Sousa trait. You guys kind of overthink everything, yeah. and it is because you care. And but I think you guys both did outstanding. We don't we don't want to let ourselves down. I think that's what that to me for me speaking for myself. That's the hardest thing. Like there's sometimes where I'm like, oh crap, and I'll be hard on myself. So I don't know about you, but oh yeah, well, yeah. I'm on that when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. I, it's not even. It's not uh, that I don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let uh, our family down. I don't want to let anybody around me down. I don't want to let you down. I don't yeah. want to let Melissa down. That's it, a character thing. It's yeah, good. I just. Yeah. I don't. It's not. It's not about myself. It's about uh, making sure that uh, everybody around me. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I yeah. don't mess up well, and let anybody down. And you remember my uh, my father's overriding philosophy about life, right? You remember what the saying is: mm. life's not fair. Get used to it. It's true. 
And that's always stuck with me. And I've, I tell people at work, you know, oh, well, life's not fair. Uh, yeah. Get used to it. Sorry. Can't always have your way. Very true. Yeah. All right. Well, and on that, uh, thanks again, Dad. You're welcome. And thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time.